Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will learn about Bloom's Taxonomy and how to use Bloom's Taxonomy to write learning objectives. Bloom's Taxonomy was created in 1956 under the leadership of educational psychologist Dr. Benjamin Bloom in order to promote higher forms of thinking in education, such as analyzing and evaluating, rather than just remembering facts or rote learning. Bloom's taxonomy is a multi-tiered model of classifying thinking according to six cognitive domains. The taxonomy is divided into six levels of learning, and we can associate action verbs with each of these levels. These six levels of learning and the associated action verbs can be used to create learning objectives for your course. Let's take a look at the six levels in more detail. Remembering involves retrieving, recognizing, and recalling relevant knowledge from long-term memory. Here are some verbs associated with this level. Understanding means to construct information from oral, written, and graphic messages. Verbs associated with this level might be Applying involves carrying out or using a procedure through executing or implementing. Here are some verbs associated with the application level. Analyzing deals with breaking material into constituent parts or determining how those parts relate to one another and to an overall structure. Here are some verbs associated with this level. Evaluating has the learner making judgments based on criteria and standards. Here are some verbs that might be associated with this level. And finally, creating or putting elements together to form a coherent or functional whole, reorganizing elements into a new pattern or structure. Here are some verbs associated with creating. Like other taxonomies, Bloom's is hierarchical and begins with lower order thinking skills to higher order thinking skills. Bloom's infers that learning at the higher levels is dependent upon having attained prerequisite knowledge and skills at lower levels. You will often see Bloom's taxonomy displayed as a pyramid graphic like the one you see here to help demonstrate the hierarchy. So let's examine how the hierarchical nature of Bloom's taxonomy relates to course design and how a student will learn the concepts in your course. As we've just learned, Bloom's classifies learning from lower order to higher order, and each category of learning builds upon the other. To further clarify this concept, it can be said that, before you can understand a concept, you must remember it. To apply a concept, you must understand it. In order to evaluate a concept, you must have analyzed it. And to create an accurate conclusion, you must have completed a thorough evaluation. As you introduce new concepts to students, they will need to understand, remember, and apply the concepts to move forward to the higher order skills, such as analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So as you begin to think about the design of your course, you should first consider the complexity of your content as well as the learning level of your students to determine where the majority of the learning should fall. Lower level or introductory courses introduce a variety of skills and new concepts and therefore have a majority of the learning objectives fall within the lower order thinking skills. Advanced courses often assume that the student comes prepared with the foundational knowledge and they are now ready to use this knowledge to move on to higher order of thinking and learning and therefore should contain learning objectives that focus on higher order skills. This is not to say that an introductory course will only accomplish the lower domain and an advanced course will only accomplish the higher order domain. In fact, every course should have a variety of objectives from each domain. However, how many of the objectives that fall within the lower or higher domains is often dependent upon the content and the level of mastery that the student is expected to achieve. To help instructors select verbs for their learning objectives, 
we've created what we'd like to call a Bloom's Will that contains the levels of Bloom's taxonomy, associated verbs that pertain to each level, and some suggestions of activities that are associated with each level. You can download your own Bloom's Will at the link shown on the screen. I'll be showing you how to use it in just a bit. And now that we understand Bloom's taxonomy, let's use what we've learned to construct a measurable learning objective. First, you should start with a stem sentence. All learning objectives contain a stem sentence. They are most often written as the stem sentence with a bulleted list of objectives that follow the stem. For your course modules, you may want to use the stem. After completing this module, you will be able to. Next, determine the learning outcome. Think about what it is that you want the students to be able to do, and then think about how you will know that they understand what you've taught them. What is the outcome or product that they will do or produce that demonstrates that they've mastered the concept? I'll use this particular presentation as an example. When designing this video, I identified that I wanted the participants to know the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. I then asked myself, how will I be able to determine that the learners understand Bloom's taxonomy? What can they do to demonstrate that they've mastered this concept? From this point, we'll move on to step three. Consult the Bloom's Will to determine the appropriate level of learning and select an appropriate verb that reflects exactly what you want the learners to do. So, let's take a look at the Bloom's Will. I'll note that this helpful tool is available to you online. Simply point your browser to ep.jhu.edu forward slash blooms and you'll be able to download a PDF of this tool. Okay, back to the wheel. We'll see that the wheel contains six levels of learning or cognitive domains in the center. Suggested measurable action verbs for each domain and a few examples of learning activities and assessments that fall within each domain. You should use your Bloom's Will to help you select verbs, activities, and assessments for your course. However, it is important to note that the suggested verbs are not all-inclusive, and you should feel free to use other verbs that you may think of if they better describe the action your student will be performing. Now, let's refer back to my example of trying to determine how I will know that my learners understand the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Note that I use the word understand, but I will not include this in my objective as it is far too vague and therefore not easy to measure or assess. We want our learning objectives to be targeted and more descriptive so that we are able to assess the outcome of the learner's performance. When thinking of my scenario, I first consider the fact that the introduction of Bloom's taxonomy is, for the most part, foundational knowledge and most likely a new concept for my learners. Therefore, I can determine that I'll want the objective to fall within the lower order domains, but I know that I want my learners to be able to remember the six categories of Bloom's, understand how they apply to learning, and demonstrate that they can apply this knowledge to eventually be used in their own course design. This brings me up to the application level. I then think about an activity that will provide me with a way to measure whether or not my learners can do these things. After looking at the suggested activities and verbs, I decide that I will have them classify learning objectives within the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. This will demonstrate that they not only know the levels, but that they can both understand and apply this knowledge. Okay. So we are now ready to move on to step four, which is to write out our actual learning objective. Classify learning objectives within the six cognitive domains of Bloom's taxonomy. We now have a student-centered measurable learning objective that we can later use to design an activity, assessment, and related teaching strategies to be associated with this objective. For example, I could develop a learning objective classification activity that participants would complete after they view this presentation. After this, I'm ready to move on to designing my next objective for this module using the same process. Now that we've learned how to use Bloom's taxonomy to help us write learning objectives, and as you work through developing a course design matrix for your course, you should strive to write strong learning objectives. 
As we learned in the other video on course and learning objectives, learning objectives are measurable, observable statements of what students will be able to do at the end of a unit of learning. So, with this in mind, it is important to emphasize that strong learning objectives do not include vague or immeasurable terms. Terms like understand, know, appreciate, become familiar with, learn, and be aware of are much too vague and almost impossible to assess. Use the Bloom's Will provided to you to help you select strong action verbs that will describe exactly what the learner will do. This will help to ensure that you are writing specific, measurable, and observable objectives that will provide a solid foundation for your course design. This concludes this video. Thanks for watching.